start now. I'm on back. Good afternoon from Tehran, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first international webinar of Commission of Technology on the topic of a look into nanotechnology development in Iran. Does Indonesia need the same strategy? Many of you don't have much spare time, but you could join us today in our webinar. On behalf of Overseas Indonesian Alliance Association, we deeply appreciate it and offer you our most grateful welcome. My name is Fatima Mustafawi Muhammadi, Master student in Medical Nanotechnology at Tehran University of Medical Science. As a representative of Commission of Technology, I will lead the webinar. Today, we are pleased to welcome our very special guest, our representator, our presenters from different countries and different backgrounds. They will share their expertise about nanotechnology and its current development in both countries in Indonesia and in Iran. Let me introduce our presenters uh, by, by one by one. The first presenter is Mr. Nasullah Tabatabai. He is Assistant Professor of Medical Nanotechnology in Medical Nanotechnology Department, Tehran University of Medical Science. He is also an International Advisor at Iran Nanotechnology Innovation Council. He will deliver presentation about introduction to nanotechnology. Hello, doctor. Good afternoon. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for your for your invitation, and uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for joining us together here. The second speaker is Mr. Nurul Taufik Rahman. He is the first chief of Nanotechnology Society of Indonesia, or MNI, Masyarakat Nano Indonesia. He is also a senior researcher at Lippi Metallurgical Research Center. His presentation is about nanotechnology development in Indonesia. Halo Bapak Nurul, selamat siang, apa kabar? Halo, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi uh, Good afternoon, Alhamdulillah. Uh, good to be here. Uh, thank you for joining us together here. And the third presenter is Mr. Reza Asadifar. He is the deputy of market development of INIC. And also he is a head of innovation policy and foresight at Technology Studies Institute. He will deliver presentation about Iran Nanotechnology Innovation Council programs, activities, and achievement. Good afternoon, doctor. I hope you're doing well. Uh uh, Salam alaikum everyone and good afternoon. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be with you and present about Iran nanotechnology. I hope it would be, I mean, uh, helpful for all the audience. Thank you for joining us in this event today. And for anyone around the world, we are so excited to have you all here participating in our webinar. For all presenters, I'd like to inform you that for each speaker, you have 20 to 30 minutes in presenting your presentation. And after that, we will provide 30 minutes for discussion session. But during the presentation for audience, you may directly ask your question and don't forget to refer to whom your question is will definitely note some good question and deliver it to the speaker. What might they say are really valuable information, so please pay full attention, get a piece of paper, and take some notes because it would be really worth it. Prepare your question, and the most important is enjoy the webinar. Well, in recent years, nanotechnology become one of the most important and exciting fields in physics, chemistry, and engineering. It shows great promise for providing us in the near future with many breakthroughs that will change the direction of technological advances. But unfortunately, this great opportunity hasn't been familiar among society. As we know, in developing a technology, we need a bunch of human resources 
On the other hand, in some countries like Iran and Spain, nanotechnology products can be found easily. In order to advance this technology in Indonesia, building network among countries is extremely needed. So in this webinar, we are going to fail off nanotechnology, why it becomes a great promise in providing better future in, in the future. And also, we want to know how far Indonesia has met in advancing nanotechnology. We will see the comparison with Iran's development in nanotechnology and its strategy as well. Together, we'll gain a comprehensive understanding and the best implementation of nanotechnology in both countries. Now, please pay full attention to our first speaker, Mr. Nasullah Tabatabai, and help me welcoming him to the stage. Mr. Tabatabai, time is yours. All right, thank you very much. Uh, do you see my screen? Okay. All right, so um, introduction to nanotechnology. Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Fatima, for the nice introduction and the time that uh, uh, this panel has given me to uh, introduce to you all about a little talk about nanotechnology, what it is, and uh, a few applications specifically in the field of medical sciences. And uh, at the end, I'll introduce to you uh, what uh, we have in our department of medical nanotechnology at the Tehran University of Medical Sciences. Uh, my name is, as was introduced, Nastola Tabatabai. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Medical Nanotechnology at the uh, Tehran University of Medical Sciences, and I am pleased to be here. So let's uh, let's get started. Um, uh, so uh, I need to right. So. So it all began uh, by a lecture uh, by Dr. Richard Feynman, uh, or Finman, rather, in 1959, where he said, uh, there is plenty of room at the bottom. Uh, nanomaterials are intermediate between um, macroscopic solids and atomic and molecular systems. So uh, there is a difference between uh, the prop the properties that you would get from bulk matter and from uh, nanomaterials. Um, the reason nanostructures are important is because of the ratio between their surface area to volume. As you can see in this um, slide, um, as you go uh, smaller in the uh, volume of the subject, the ratio of surface area to volume becomes uh, larger. And this is the key important uh, fact about nanomaterials. Uh, so what is uh, nanotechnology? Basically, nanotechnology is the uh, creation of useful functional materials, uh, uh, devices, and systems through uh, control of matter on the nanom uh, nanometric length scale and exploitation of novel phenomena and properties, uh, whether it's physical, chemical, or biological, uh, at the uh, uh, length scale of nanometer. Um, applications are, uh, are uh, humongous when it comes to nanotechnology, space, medicine, electronics, uh, uh, food, uh, fuel cells, solar cells. Uh, batteries, um, air filtration, um, uh, chemical sensors, fabric, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There is a lot of uh, um, applications for this technology that uh, is being developed every day. Uh, when it comes to classification of nanomaterials, uh, some are uh, classified as uh, some are classified as uh, uh, unilamellar uh, liposomes uh, and solid lipid nanoparticles and multilamellar uh, liposomes. They're polymeric nanoparticles or metallic nanoparticles and quantum dots. Some others classify nanomaterials uh, in range of dimension, so zero dimension or one dimension or two dimensions. Um, 
some classify nanomaterials as organic and inorganic uh, uh, material. Um, organic materials such as, uh, again, liposomes or missiles, dendrimers, um, carbon-based nanomaterials, and in, uh, inorganic materials such as uh, silicon nanoparticle or metallic nanoparticle, magnetic nanoparticles, and I'll explain a little bit about uh, what these uh, uh, what these particles are. So basically, what we're trying to say is that if you have a bulk matter, any basically any sort of bulk matter, and you minimize the size to uh, uh, a nanometric size length, uh, scale length, then uh, you have a nanomaterial. And uh, applications for which uses nanomaterials become uh, applications of nanotechnology. Um, uh, if, you, um, if you take a, a, a nanomaterial and uh, you modify size uh, or material or shape or surface with uh, whatever modification that uh, is available to you, you get a, a variety of um, applications for that material. So, for instance, if if you have, uh, let's say, uh, gold particles and you make them into nanometric gold particles and you change the size from 5 nanometer to 10 nanometer to 20 nanometer to 100 nanometer, the properties of these materials uh, become different. And this is a key, uh, in fact, this is another uh, key important uh, uh, fact about nanomaterials that shape and size and surface functionalization and the material can change uh, their properties. Um, so let's talk a little bit about applications. Um, the reason I bring this one, uh, the biologically inspired nanomaterials, is because first, after um, after nanotechnology was uh, was inspired everywhere, and uh, people uh, rushed to figure out what they can do with these materials. They realized that in biology, uh, there are a lot of uh, nanometric uh, particles that uh, can 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 inspire the design and engineering of the nanomaterials that we synthesize in the laboratory. So, for instance, we have uh, bacteria and we have uh, viruses that are um, every day, that they work every day in our natural habitat, and uh, they can inspire us for delivering uh, uh, genetic material or medication uh, as far as engineering the nanoparticles go. Um, there, my, my specialty is in the medical field, so most of my applications may fall into that league, but I'm sure uh, the other speakers have uh, different matter different um, applications that they can talk about. Um, another uh, interesting thing is that there are uh, uh, there are uh, bacteria uh, in, in the natural habitat that they produce nanoparticles in themselves. And they use these nanoparticles to live and look for food, for instance. Uh, these uh, bacteria that you see in this slide are magnetotactic bacteria. So they develop these uh, magnetic nanoparticles, iron oxide nanoparticles, inside of them. And they use this to guide them uh, uh, towards a magnetic field. Basically, they work with the um, magnetic field of the earth and they uh, swim to find energy uh, to, to sw swim to find food in in their uh, environment with these particles and now there's a lot of study on how we can use uh, how we can manipulate the bacteria to deliver something for us or how we can uh, use the bacteria to synthesize nanoparticles for us um, hyperthermia is another uh, interesting uh, um, um, another interesting application of nanomaterial. In, basically, in the medical field, um, elevation of temperature 
uh, is called hyperthermia. When you get a virus in your system, your body responds with a fever, and that temperature, rise of temperature, causes the, the, the infection to, uh, to uh, eliminate. Now, if we, um, uh, if we use nanomaterial to remotely increase the um, temperature of a, a place in, in an organ or a, a site in the human body, then we can get rid of those uh, um, uh, 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 those uh, the, the infections, or uh, in the case of cancer, maybe the, uh, very, re very remotely and very precisely. Um, there are companies nowadays that uh, provide clinical trials for such treatments uh, for cancer therapy. Um, we have uh, uh, in this slide. You have this. Uh, magnetic field machine that uses uh, that the patients uh, go under the physician used to, to put the patient under and use magnetic nanoparticle um, Mm, excuse me, do you have uh, to uh, treat? Okay, so uh, it seems that we have some problem with uh, the first speaker. So, Prof. Nurul, uh, maybe now uh, the time of your turn, so you can uh, deliver your presentation. Yeah, while well, well, we we are waiting for Dr. Tabata Bay. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hi everyone. It is my pleasure to be here to have a chance to deliver my presentation. I would like to uh, talk a little bit about our experience in developing nanotechnology in Indonesia. Uh, let I start my. Uh, okay, I here is my presentation. I hope all of you see my uh, presentation, uh, raw materials. Okay. Um, uh, this I the title of my presentation is Indonesia from nanotechnology perspective, a new way to look at the future of our nation. Uh, I a little bit talk about status, uh, prospect, and challenge uh, nanotechnology in Indonesia. Uh, next. Uh, this is the outline first talking about the current status of nanotechnology development in Indonesia then Indonesia from nanotechnology perspective a new way to look into the future of our nation and third uh, last but not least the nanotechnology commercialization in Indonesia the challenge of our research group uh, Indonesia we are 
the development of technology in Indonesia in brief. Before 2004, several research centers and university have started nanotechnology research. Research is mainly conducted by young researchers who just came back from abroad. 2004-2005, the State Ministry of Research and Technology started to identify research on nanotechnology. April 2005, Indonesian Society for Nano or Masyarakat Nano Indonesia, MNI, was established in order to accelerate uh, development of now technology R&D in Indonesia. MNI has created programs such as uh, workshops, national and international conference, nanotechnology roadshow, establishing MOU with universities to collaborate with researcher and educate students, also creating information center for nanotechnology uh, via website. 2004, 2008, the State Ministry of Research and Technology gave financial support for nanotechnology R&D and then research on nanotechnology has become significant issue at research centers and in university in Indonesia. 2008 and 2010, Ministry of Industry in collaboration with MNI made nanotechnology roadmap for supporting national industry. 2010, 2011, Ministry of Agriculture has started giving research grant for nano and uh, uh, proposed nano center for food implication. 2012, 2018, Nanotech era in industry begins, I think. And now 2020, uh, now nanotech is expected to become national issue. Uh, here is about a little bit, so you, I will show you about paradigm, a shift of nanotech development in U US. Um, before the 1998, uh, before the wave of nanotechnology, R&D of nanotech is pragmatic and non-science limited interest and Nanotech is science fiction. And then 1990, 2001, uh, there is the transition uh, period that R&D become new trend and many discovery and now technology now uh, uh, become expect in 15, 30 years. After 2001, it's very fast. Now the era begins. Uh, mega trend, accelerate, it and by them see. How about in Indonesia? Uh, before 2005, before MNI, there is a limited interest and limited information about nanotechnology. 2004, 2005, 2008, uh, there's a transition, limited R&D, nanotechnology is science fiction. Uh, some of us uh, believe it is a fiction in the future. Uh, 2008, 2012, uh, nanotechnology research trend and uh, expect in the future. And we have industrial roadmap and 2004 now, maybe now uh, there are several startup company and a national issue, uh, maybe uh, another era in industry begin. Uh, the activity of uh, nanotechnology in Indonesia uh, is getting more active since 2005, mm -hmm. where many institutions from several ministries have been involved seriously. The pioneer is Ministry of Research and Technology, uh, LIPI, BATAN, BBPT, Ministry of Industry, and Ministry of National Education, University of course, then followed by Ministry of Agriculture, Energy and Minerals Resources, and coming soon, maybe it's Myrins, very serious, uh, uh, will uh, coming. Uh, about the funding, uh, uh, 2000, since 2005, Ministry Research on and Technology, uh, there are uh, national agenda in White Book, uh, new priority field of advanced material and nanotechnology. There's a grant for development and implementation of nanotechnology for supporting national industry uh, for advanced material and change uh, 2005 2000 to, 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 be, to become advanced materials. Ministry of Industry since 2008. Uh, Agency for Industrial Research and Development degree uh, uh, regarding nanotechnology roadmap for supporting national industry. Roadmap for textile, ceramics, 2008, food and chemical, 2009, and polymer industry, 2010. Assessment of incentive program for national industry, mm. which apply nanotechnology for downstream for uh, chemical industry, and research grant for development and implementation is uh, 2000. 2008-2010. And continues, uh, Ministry of Agriculture Indonesia 
also have some program a research consortium on nanotechnology application for fertilizer uh, development of nanotechnology for food and uh, agriculture in Indonesia establishment of nanotechnology laboratory for food and agriculture in in fiscal 2012-2013 with total amount one of uh, 5.4 uh, million US and and also a ministry of energy uh, there are some grant and uh, for university uh, now take policy at several university uh, university Indonesia building a center for excellence for nano and Bandung seat of technology also uh, collaboration with JICA 10 November uh, University of Gajah Mada and many of the, them they uh, allocate budget for non-technical infrastructure uh, Indonesian Institute of Sciences my place my uh, and, and Batan also have a new budget however uh, uh, no specific nanotechnology funding since 2013 uh, in including in uh, advanced material uh, uh, so uh, next, I would like to talk a little bit about Indonesian Society for Nano. It was established in April 2005 and composed of more than uh, 500 young researchers from many national research institutions, government institutions, research, university, private sector in the discipline of nanotechnology. Uh, he is in the profile of uh, 300 uh, nano. It's all our activity. Uh, we have 20 student nano clubs in Indonesia, more than 500 mm. seminars regarding nanotechnology, and we also uh, nano center give uh, fund for scholarship of more than 100, uh, 500 scholarship. Uh, here is the the age uh, of nanotechnology export in Indonesia, mostly uh, uh, from the 2000, uh, the, the bird from 2000 2004. Yes. Then next uh, is about the education. Uh, the education uh, mostly uh, PhD degree eighty four percent, master uh, about fourteen percent, and uh, affiliation uh, is LIPI is uh, my institution more than about fifty. And yes, just you can see, uh, education background uh, uh, almost uh, came from Japan, and yeah, in Indonesia there are some uh, another from Australia, Singapore, German. Uh, no one came from Iran, I think. <laughs> Maybe next uh, um, field of nano. R&D in Indonesia, uh, 50% about nanomaterials, and then another uh, nanoelectronic, nanobiology is 40%. Then we do a survey in industry which apply nanotechnology. We conduct the survey, more than 150 industry, including textile, ceramics, chemistry, customer food, ICT, automotive foods. So, uh, uh, 20, uh, 35 to 38 of industry in Indonesia already use uh, technology nanotechnology. However, the source of technology about 90% is import and others from local. And the problem faced by industry in, in, in Indonesia not about a finance fi financial, but they don't know about the information. 41% uh, and technology mm. and human resources. So the technology, nanotechnology business is not, the barrier entry of technology, nanotechnology business is not the financial, but about information and technology mm. itself. Uh, here's the roadmap of nanotechnology development to support industry in Indonesia. Uh, there are three phases. Uh, sorry, it's in Indonesia, but you can see later. And now I will a little bit talk about innovation from now time perspective, a new way to look into the future of our nation. Indonesia is uh, blessed with abundance of natural resources, including 
its biodiversity. The second greatest after Brazil, Indonesia is home uh, eleven of the world flowering plants and many things. I think um, uh, we are the fifth uh, in the world for di biodiversity. So, uh, in summary, uh, third uh, we are we have third most populated country in Asia and fourth in in the world, and its potential market. Uh, the nourishes minerals, wide variety of flora and fauna is as can be used for raw materials for nano based product. Thus, now technology development must be directed to manage and add Indonesian natural resource value significantly for fulfilling all domestic needs with competing global product to increase nation competitiveness. Uh, just I give you some example. I think all of you know if you uh, uh, use with. Uh, in this nanotechnology, uh, from iron sand we can make several uh, pigment, uh, red oxide, black oxide that can be increased the significantly the value uh, for one kilogram pigment uh, can about one million rupiah. Uh, curcuma, I think all of you know also if you use uh, nanotechnology. The, it can be added value, can be also increase the economical uh, value about one uh, million per kilogram. Uh, this may be ginger nanoparticles is our uh, research, can be also increased like this. Uh, there is no, uh, it's very clear and can increase. And many things uh, for mango centrin. Uh, that we do not use, uh, but it can be uh, change, change to uh, nanoparticles. And also this ketosan nanoparticles from stream cells uh, can be used for uh, cos cosmetic, anti-aging, wound healing, drug delivery, and many things. So uh, with nanotechnology, natural resources can be significantly enhance their added value. Uh, that uh, I would like to summarize that so by uh give uh nanotechnology insert to the our uh natural sources can be increased uh the the, the value added and i can buy a smart handphone just only using barter using one mangosteen rim nanoparticle one kilogram uh to buy in the uh, smartphone and uh, here's the nano tsunami. The nano tsunami is gaining height. So uh, the players of nanotechnology in the world, uh, not the large company, only 10%. So startup or small company, 40%, and research institute, 32%. So the nanotechnology, uh, the business, not uh, because of the money, but because of the technology. So last but not least, I would like to a uh, little bit uh, uh, tell about our experience in democratized nanotechnology in Indonesia. Uh, here's our uh, headquarter in Serpong. Uh, here's our teams. We have uh, now more than 120 uh, staff. Uh, young researcher, young uh, researcher. Our team uh, achievement, we already have 30 patent and copyright. We publish more than, I think, 400, uh, seven books, uh, 50 grants, 30 uh, award. And what's next? Uh, so we want to bring the invention to the marketplace. Uh, this is our patents. Uh, maybe you just search my name in the media. Uh, it's top 10 national inventor by <laughs> Tempo and many things. Uh, uh, we got award from uh, ministry, uh, many, uh, no, and our vice president and president Indonesia, Habibie. And two times I got the Habibie uh, from PPPT also and uh, from WIPO. A national inventor medals uh, in Vice President Palace 2016. 
So what next? Uh, we now we are uh, we, we we develop three uh, institution in Indonesia: Nano Venture is accelerator, and Nano Center Indonesian Foundation, and Nano Research Institute. We uh, uh, with uh, deep tech technology, we develop deep tech technology, nanotechnology, by knowing uh, uh, and Internet of Things. Here is the team, our teams, uh, and there are some co-founding and partnering sciences uh, here. And uh, here is the uh, our uh, this uh, our uh, platform uh, make it a startup. So we uh, the scientists have patent, and we trying to find a new young scientists and join together, and we give up present capital, co-working space, business coaching, and uh, make uh, trying to find uh, investor and network. Uh, now we we have uh, ten startups. Uh, last year, uh, more than two point five million US. And we also create 500 jobs more. Here is our startup. Just you can see uh, this here is about the um, revenue last year. And just I would like to here's so the startup is uh, like this: young scientists, and this is scientist export. Uh, from PBBT, in uh, uh, Nova, no, 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 Novan from Taiwan, make a uh, great startup like this. Nanotech Herbal Indonesia merupakan perusahaan pemula atau startup company dalam bidang manufaktur yang berdiri pada bulan September 2013. Pada tahun 2014, PT Nanotech Herbal Indonesia mengikuti seleksi inkubasi teknologi di lembaga inkubator BPPT Nano dari Nanotech Herbal Indonesia. Kitosan Nano diprediksi akan jauh lebih hebat dari pendahulunya Propolis Nano. Kitosan aktif dalam membantu menginduksi pembentukan kolagen sehingga sangat sesuai untuk kebutuhan industri kosmetik. Namun kemampuan lain Kitosan Nano dalam mengobati luka basah penderita diabetes juga menjadi hal menarik lainnya. Unit kedua adalah jasa karakterisasi bahan. Unit ini merupakan bagian dari R&D yang membantu pihak uh, luar in, perusahaan Indonesia. untuk melakukan uji karakterisasi bahan di NHI menggunakan mesin dan alat yang dimiliki. Unit ketiga adalah jasa nanoprocessing dengan teknologi yang dimiliki so have, perusahaan. Uh, Nanotech Herbal Indonesia membantu industri-industri herbal, herbal Indonesia untuk memiliki bahan herbal yang sudah diproses uh, dengan teknologi services. nano. Unit And here is uh, Aulia Rivada. I think you uh, Indonesian PPI uh, uh, from Pakistan with me making uh, make uh, Natura uh, Nano uh, Startup. Anda masih bersama kami di CNN Indonesia Tech News. Teknologi nano diperkirakan akan menjadi teknologi masa depan. Dan kini teknologi tersebut juga sudah mulai banyak dipergunakan di Indonesia. Salah satunya untuk dunia kecantikan. So, nanotechnology for uh, cosmetic. Produk kosmetik ini telah jauh berkembang. Cairan yang dibawa partikel nano akan bergerak pada lapisan kulit yang paling bawah, sehingga manfaatnya dapat dirasakan secara maksimal. Teknologi nano dalam produk kecantikan wajah sebenarnya sudah mulai digunakan di Indonesia sejak tahun 2013. Ya, memang produk kecantikan menggunakan teknologi nano langsung terasa karena partikel yang dibuat sekecil mungkin langsung meresap ke dalam wajah dan membuat wajah lebih segar dan bersinar. So we develop uh, rice nanoparticles for cosmetic and many things. Uh, last year we uh, we make a nano uh, bubble machine. Uh, we are number one in Halo, uh, saya Daddy. in competition. Saya oh, Hargrep. Saya Rizky, inkubator komputer. Kami dari nanobubble.id. Uh, this nanobubble can increase. Kita merupakan dari tim uh, nanobubble.id yang merupakan startup uh, mesin uh, aerator string. berteknologi nano, di mana menghasilkan gelembung oksigen berukuran nano yang bisa mensuplai oksigen di tambak udang ataupun tambak perikanan. Dan kita integrasikan dengan IoT system yang bisa ada akses pada aplikasi smartphone Android. 
fokus kami adalah uh, untuk tahun ini kita sedang penerapan di Udang Faname. Ke depan kita akan uji coba ke ikan kapu, kemudian ke bidang pertanian ada hidroponik juga kita akan coba seperti itu. And last year also we are also mandiri number one from 3000 startup we are uh, the best of the best of uh, 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 of the uh, competition. Uh, here is just I show you uh, the harvest of three uh, Okay. Uh, Another, we have also uh, scouters, uh, the IT uh, platform of startup, giving uh, uh, tutorial for uh, scholarship to going to a board. And here is our products. We have more than 50 products based on nanotechnology is already in the market in Indonesia. Is uh, the champion of our product. The propolis, sun pro propolis. Maybe you can search search in the uh, Google and Colina for mass. And also, uh, I think uh, we make. Tidak perlu khawatir karena kulit bisa mengisi essential white cerahkan wajah cantikmu. Rice nanoparticle. And also this one for mangosin. Di saat semua tidak berjalan baik, di saat itulah aku menenangkan. Garcia Skincare mengandung ekstra kulit manggis, mencerahkan, dan mencegah kerutan pada wajah. Garcia Skincare cantik dalam ketaatan. And uh, nanoparticles for gold, uh, for skincare also. And for uh, cholesterol, health well green. And maybe if you go to the supermarket in the market, you see nano silver. Uh, this is our product also. Uh, for the uh, we supply nano silver for this product. Uh, is so uh, the conclusion of my presentation is interest in nanotechnology is increasing in last two decades. Uh, particularly from government and industry to uh, due to the benefit and opportunity of nanotechnology application in the future. Nanotechnology development must be directed to manage and add Indonesian natural resources value significantly for fulfilling domestic and global needs for sustainable future. Networking development, especially with foreign institutions, is required to accelerate nanotechnology implementation in safe manner in Indonesia. The challenge is how to commercialize nanotechnology R&D result from lab to the industry. The requirement things is uh, knowledge workers, researcher, great research results, invention, researcher with entrepreneurial attitudes, and, and the strategy is making startup company, of course, collaboration between R&D and center and industry. Uh, I think nanotechnology is the last trend for Indonesia. And last but not least, I would like to show you the video. Saya ingin memaknai dari konteks ini bahwa membangun bangsa ini harus ya seharusnya ini peran kita sudah jelas. Mari kita otak kita ini kita agak sedikit peras lah gitu tanda kutip ya. Masa sih kita nggak bisa nih e, mengangkat satu produk, dua produk, tiga produk yang bisa mungkin berkontribusi terhadap negara kita. Mau nemen kalau bahasa Jawa ya sangat misalnya ya. saya yakin pasti bisa. Uh, demikian uh, thank you so much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so thank you for your enlightening speech Mr. Taufik Rahman uh, yeah. we really apologize for the bad connection uh, we will continue We'll go back to the first presenter, Mr. Tabatabai. Time is yours. Thank you very much. Sorry for uh, the little uh, mixed up. Um, I had no idea that I was uh, disconnected. And uh, now I know that uh, perhaps you, uh, uh, you followed some of my uh, presentation. Let me bring it up, uh, up to around this area, if that's okay. 
So we continue with that. Uh, a lot of points was made by uh, Professor Nurul. So I'll skip through that so we can get to our third uh, presenter. Uh, so hyperthermia is, as I explained, is something that uh, is an application, it's a medical application of the nanotechnology. And that's something we uh, at the university, we follow, we do a lot of research on. Uh, cryopreservation is another technique that uh, uses uh, the nanoparticles for uh, for rapidly thawing of a frozen tissue before transplant, and this is also something that we uh, that uh, we worked on. Drug delivery is another um, important and very interesting idea uh, that we can use with uh, um, various nano nanomaterials to um, uh, enhance the specificity of the drug targeting in the medical field. Um, uh, clinical trials on using uh, nanoparticles that have magnetic properties to deliver certain medication to a specific area uh, have started and uh, are on the way. Um, and this is something that we also work on at the department. Um, nanofibers is another important topic that we uh, we research a lot and thoroughly at the department at the university. I'm sure Dr. Asadi Farah will also mention this part, but um, this is a comparison. This what you see in the picture is a comparison of a uh, human hair uh, compared to nanofibers, and these nanofibers can bring up enormous potential in a uh, variety of uh, uh, industries from uh, air filtration to water filtration to uh, um, um, uh, the wound dressing and drug delivery. Um, basically what it is is that you get uh, your polymer in a syringe and you pump it into a collector and uh, as you apply a voltage, this, uh, this polymer depending on the uh, properties of this polymer, the polymer gets collected in the form of nanofibers. Um, so um, one of the most um, visual um, uh, pro product from this, uh, from this technology is respiratory face masks that are much needed today with the, um, with the outbreak of the, uh, the new coronavirus. Um, using these N95 masks with this technology has saved a lot of um, uh, people who work in this in, in the industry. Um, um, uh, another important product that uh, we also work on at the department is using silver nanoparticles as disinfectants. Um, they can produce ROS and they can produce uh, uh, they can uh, uh, disengage the bacteria that is grown on a surface. Um, microfluidic systems is another application that uh, mm -hmm. our department is um, is focusing on. Uh, these are um, little channels, these micron sized channels that use nanometric and micrometric nanoliter and microliter samples running through them uh, and uh, analyzing them, uh, so uh, it, which gives us a faster way of analyzing a, uh, a substance in, uh, uh, in a sample. So the idea is that you convert the entire benchmark of a laboratory into a chip, and only use of nanotechnology can help us this uh, come about this transition. Uh, this is, uh, again, something that our department uh, has focused on. Uh, one of the project is to uh, come up with a way to, um, um, to uh, uh, culture cells, uh, in vitro cells, and assay them in a microfluidic channel uh, and get results uh, faster than uh, the uh, conventional methods. Um, organ on a chip is another technique that um, our colleagues in the department are working on. The idea is that if you have a drug uh, of interest and you want to test it on a body, it is much better that you test it on 
uh, a microfluidic system that contains cells grown from different organs. And this can help us understand what this drug will do to, uh, for instance, the lungs, the heart, the bone, the kidneys, uh, if it's specific, uh, if it's designed specifically for a specific organ on its way, what does it do to the other organs? And this is another topic that we're working on. Uh, nanomaterials for diagnosis. Uh, it's uh, This is also another uh, application that uh, we work on this department. Um, so the idea is that uh, now what we, whenever we diagnose uh, a, a cancer, uh, we are at later stages. Uh, but uh, what if we could uh, diagnose something uh, uh, at the earlier stages? Um, and using biomarkers, uh, using lots of biomarkers, we can uh, we can achieve that. We can figure out if a disease is at early stage or later stage so the diagnosis is easier. Uh, and with biosensors, this is uh, feasible and biosensors are things that are, uh, are, are um, um, uh, product titles that uh, our colleagues are working on. Uh, more specifically, point of care diagnosis. Um, you've seen rapid tests and, and these are also being uh, exploited in our department uh, using uh, uh, rapid tests to figure out the uh, uh, a disease or uh, um, uh, uh, or an uh, or an analyte in a, a subject. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll, I think everyone is familiar with these. So I I uh, try to go quick here. Um, um, so, uh, in contrast, agents also are important. Uh, we have medical imaging uh, modalities such as MRI and uh, CT. Well, MRI works with uh, magnetic nanoparticles and magnetism, and CT is basically uh, uh, X-ray and X-ray related. So, um, particles that can enhance the image acquired by these medical modal uh, medical imaging uh, techniques. Uh, are, are uh, of our interest. So instead of uh, trying to inject the patient with a contrast agent, uh, the high concentration of a contrast agent, we can maybe design nanostructures that can go specific to a specific location in the um, in the body and um, enhance the uh, image that is acquired by these modalities. Uh, the, these are uh, these are uh, extremely interesting and uh, very nice projects that we are currently um, working at. Uh, the challenges, uh, Professor Nuru uh, explained some of the challenges. Uh, I'll I'll quickly say that uh, in my view there are uh, ethical issues and societal uh, issues with uh, with respect to. Uh, and nanotechnology. Uh, well, nanotechnology can actually revolutionize a lot of uh, products and procedures and application. It has um, benefited uh, many sectors, manufacturing sectors, energy sectors. Uh, and in the medical uh, world, nanotechnology, as I explained, um, uh, has already redefined a lot of our ways with dealing with uh, prognosis and diagnosis and, uh, and treatment. Uh, but uh, potential health uh, effects, small uh, particles can easily get into our biological system through inhalation or the blood-brain barrier uh, or absorption through the skin. Uh, so these are, these are uh, potential risks that do come with uh, nanotechnology. Um, as far as uh, societal uh, issues, um, 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 it is still expensive to, to manufacture nano devices and some of the nanomaterials, and there needs to be uh, something done for that. And the gap between nanotechnology and the industry uh, in, in most part uh, still exist. Uh, uh, as as uh, the previous speaker uh, explained, uh, we still don't know how to commercialize fully 
what we research in the university. And that's something that perhaps Dr. Asadifar can uh, uh, explain a little more in his uh, talk. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so lack of ability to translate uh, uh, R&D, research and development, investment, and research into economic uh, outcome is, uh, is a challenge uh, in, the, in this field. Uh, I have brought a little uh, table of what, uh, what each nanoparticle can uh, bring harm to the uh, environment and to the um, biological entity. Um, this, is, uh, this can be available to you later on if you have uh, more, in, uh, more questions about it. But basically, the idea is that nanomaterials can um, get into our system. Yes, we use them for uh, drug delivery or uh, as a contrast agent, but they can get into our system and they can uh, harm us in other ways. So uh, using them in the medical field is always, uh, we need to always uh, make sure that the risks associated with these particles outweigh uh, do not outweigh the benef benefits that uh, uh, that come with these particles. Um, I'll my, my the end of my talk. I will just introduce our uh, department, the Department of Medical Nanotechnology at Tehran University of Medical Sciences. Uh, one very nice thing about our department, and this can uh, in fact be a model for Indonesia is that uh, most places uh, the synthesis of nanoparticles is done elsewhere and then characterization is done elsewhere and then the in vitro and in vivo studies are done perhaps in the university or um, uh, in the research center but what happened is that in our university and specifically in our department uh, the synthesis of the nanomaterial and the characterization and the in vitro and in vivo studies as far as uh, toxicity uh, and uh, cytotoxic effects of the particles uh, are all done in our environment, in our um, uh, department, in our laboratories. So the students become extremely familiar with the whole range of where these particles come from to where these particles can be applied. Um, and this is very interesting, and I think uh, other places such as Indonesia can take advantage of this, um, uh, this model. Um, we have Dr. Uh, Gambari, he's the head of the department. He's a medical doctor, but he has a PhD in regenerative medicine. Um, uh, and, uh, um, he he um, he leads the department. We have uh, Dr. Kharazi. He ha she has a PhD in physics, so we're covered with the uh, with the physics of particles. Uh, we have Dr. Faridi Majidi. Um, he is uh, he's a PhD in chemistry, so the chemistry of particles are covered. Um, uh, it's they we have me in the department obviously, and I have a PhD in biomedical engineering, and um, uh, as far as the uh, biomedical engineering of the projects, I help around. We have another uh, 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 medical doctor, uh, Dr. Khosravani. Um, he's also available to um, help us in uh, nano, uh, nanomedicine. Uh, we have Dr. Adobe. He's a PhD in uh, medical nanotechnology, and he's basically his background is food industry, so uh, he covers that area. Uh, we have uh, another uh, medical doctor, Dr. Rahim Nia, um, um, that he he's also interested in contrast agents and inflammatory diseases. And we have four uh, other uh, very good members uh, that are not directly in our department, but they help us uh, a lot with, the, with our uh, endeavors and our goals. Uh, uh, Professor Sarkar, uh, Professor Rezaiyad, Professor Pumant, and Dr. Saber. Uh, and they are uh, based in other uh, areas uh, in the in the university, but they help us a lot with uh, with our projects. Um, 
So uh, this concludes my presentation. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed this little uh, talk. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Mr. Tabatabai, for your enlightening speech. Uh, up till now, we already hear the presentation about development of nanotechnology in Indonesia, and also uh, the introduction about nanotechnology from Mr. Tabatabai. Now we move to the third speaker, Dr. Reza Sadifard. Time is yours. Uh, hello again, uh, and uh, I. Uh, can I share my uh, uh, slide myself, or you can uh, I mean, uh, share it? Yeah, you shared it. So uh, I want to give you a brief uh, introduction about Iran Nanotechnology Innovation Council. Uh, the expe ex expectation uh, in the end of this presentation is that we find uh, some, uh, I mean, uh, grounds for collaboration and also hopeful some lessons could be drawn by our, I mean, Indo Indonesian uh, counterparts and brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, the organization that the dedicatedly, uh, I mean, manage nanotechnology in Iran is INIC that stands for Iran Nanotechnology Innovation Council. This uh, organization uh, belongs to or is under the presidency, vice presidency for science and technology. And uh, uh, the responsibilities of uh, uh, these organization is at the top policy making and then some uh, uh, tasks for, uh, I mean, pu public awareness and, uh, uh, I mean, other plans. Uh, we started nanotechnology in Iran uh, in 2001 with some policy studies. We want to find, uh, is nanotechnology uh, an, opp an opportunity window uh, for Iran and could we, uh, I mean, uh, take it as a as an opportunity for the country, and then after two years, we come to this, this decision that we need to establish a new organization to put this technology in a fast track, uh, because uh, other ministries and, and other organization they had some other responsibility, and we need to uh, I mean. Uh, put this uh, uh, new opportunity in a fast track, so we established INIC. Uh, after two years, we passed a national plan in the cabinet, uh, and after 10 years, we passed the next 10-year uh, term plan that we, I introduced them in the next slide, please. The next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, uh, our first uh, uh, I mean, ten-year term plan was uh, the first future strategy. That the concentration of these uh, document and this program was on uh, establishing infrastructures and making public awareness, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, preparing human resource and uh, developing technology. Uh, and uh, the next uh, tenure term plan uh, started in 2016, and now we are in, in the middle of this uh, plan. Uh, the concentration of this plan is industrialization, commercialization, uh, uh, specifically in to entering Iranian nanoproduct to international market and also international collaboration. So next slide, please. Mm. Yeah, uh, these are our priority areas. Three, mm, I mean, 
pri priorities, energy. As you know, Iran is very rich country in the, uh, I mean, fossil energies, like oil and gas energies. And also uh, there is an opportunity for solar energy. And also in health and healthcare oriented, I mean, uh, industries like uh, medicine and other uh, healthcare related industries. Uh, and the next one is water and environment that is uh, uh, now, it's, it's a worldwide problem. Next slide, please. Uh, I need to go to the next slide. May I uh, mm, uh, use my, my own computer to use the slides? Yes. Yeah, can I yes, share my so, so I think yeah. Okay. Do you see my screen now? Uh, I don't know. Do you see on my screen? Mm. Do you do you, do you have my screen now in the? Is it about educational training program? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, one of the ex experiences of Iran, I think, this is a unique experience that uh, in many countries uh, uh, they started nanotechnology education from the university level, but in Iran we started it from the uh, I mean, high school and even elementary school level. So we, uh, I mean, prepared a very, uh, I mean, firm uh, and robust backbone for nanotechnology human resource resources in Iran. And uh, up to now, more than 1 million high school students get trained by, I mean, uh, by some workshops and uh, not just theoretically, but also uh, practically. Uh, and uh, uh, we established more than 80 educational laboratories around the country in every 31 provinces and many, in many cities. Uh, these uh, educational laboratories include uh, about uh, 10 to 15 Iranian-made uh, uh, nanotechnology instruments that they are some of them are for nanotechnology fabrication for example electric spinning machine wire explosion machine sputtering machine and some the some others for characterization uh, as you can see in the uh, screen for example atomic force microscope or uh, scanning tiling mic microscopes that uh, uh, these uh, uh, I mean, package uh, for for marketing this pa package. There is a uh, I mean company uh, named Havana that uh, uh, I mean introduced this package in, internationally, and now uh, in China, in Cuba, in Oman, they established some educational labs, uh, and they uh, they I mean had some workshops for uh, high school students. Uh, for uh, human resource development, we uh, had very strong plan. Uh, the base of this plan is, uh, I mean, offering some incentives and grants for uh, for university professors, for, for uh, students, and for uh, nanotechnology research in many areas. You know, nanotechnology is very, I'm a wide area related to all, uh, I mean, uh, uh, natural science and engineering and medical science. So, uh, in uh, about uh, uh, 70, uh, 70 universities we had uh, programs for nanotechnology in msc and phd level and uh, 
the result of these these plans and programs uh, now is uh, um, more than uh, 37,000 experts uh, MSc about. I mean, uh, the students who get their MSc or they are uh, PhD students or PhD graduates and uh, about uh, 3,000 university professors who who have, uh, I mean, graduated in nanotechnology or they switched to nanotechnology. Uh, the result of these uh, activities in universities and research centers is, is an uh, explosive uh, and exponential, exponential growth of nanotechnology uh, scientific production, science production in, in Iran. You can see when we started, for example, in 2004, uh, in whole year, uh, Iranian, I mean, researchers published about 50 uh, papers in, in whole year and our rank was 44. Uh, now, in, in the end of uh, 2019, uh, Iranian researchers uh, published more than 11,000, uh, I mean, non technology papers and publications, and the Iran's uh, rank uh, was fourth. As you can see, before Iran, China is about, China with about 40% of all. Uh, I mean, global publication uh, is the, 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 the rank first, then US, then India, and Iran is the rank uh, force with about 6% of, uh, I mean, global publication in nanotechnology. Uh, I, I just, uh, I, I, I didn't have enough information about what, uh, what is going on in nanotechnology in Indonesia, but I asked my colleagues to bring some information from uh, statnano.com, the, the resource uh, website for nanotechnology statistics. And this is uh, the growth rate of Indonesia, as you can see, there's a natural growth rate, uh, growth rate uh, and in 2019 there are more than 500 publications uh, and uh, many countries they have uh, good I mean, growth and then Indonesia also have a good growth in this area and there's a good potential but I think with big publication as the uh, Professor Tofiq Rahman said, Indonesia is the fourth uh, rank in public population in the world. Uh, the potential of Indonesia is uh, too much than what, what, it, what it is now. And uh, as you can see, the rank uh, of publication is 43. So uh, with, with a, I mean, aggressive plan, it could be improved very well. Uh, as you can see, the distribution of uh, nanotechnology publication in the world is uh, more than 50% in Asia. So Asian countries could have a very good collaboration among uh, these countries and uh, between themselves. And uh, Indonesia, China, India, Iran, uh, they have good uh, I mean, publication and good potential for I mean, collaboration. Uh, as you can see, um, uh, totally we uh, had uh, I mean, published uh, um, 260 international patents. The domestic patents are, uh, uh, they, we have very high number, but international, uh, international published patents are 216 in nanotechnology. And uh, as you know, nanotechnology researches uh, and also production is based and related on
trouble with sound internet connection yes the, that that could be the case uh, but uh, can I take the floor for one second and uh, address a couple of questions that were asked by, from me um, in the forum? Is that okay, Fatima? Yeah, it's okay, doctor. Um, okay, so so someone someone asked if uh, uh, someone asked in the forum that uh, what we've done uh, as far as nanotechnology and COVID nineteen at the Tehran University of Medical Sciences. So uh, as I explained before, there is uh, uh, there is uh, there is the research on uh, nanofibers that helped us uh, manufacture uh, N95 and N99 masks at this time where um, everywhere masks were required. So uh, this this, this uh, there was this, uh, there was a company that used. This technology, it's related to Tehran University of Medical Sciences, and we used uh, we used this material to manufacture these masks and uh, um, provide uh, the hospitals and the uh, um, medical centers for doctors and for patients. And so th this is something that is directly related to COVID-19. So the idea of, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with the uh, 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 with the N95 and N99 uh, standardization, what it says is that 99 or 95 percent of um, uh, particles uh, at uh, three uh, at 300 nanometer can be captured by this uh, by this filtration mechanism. Uh, so um, uh, basically, if you have say you have a, a napkin, and if you um, um, fold the napkin, as you have a better filtration, but you lose uh, airflow because you've increased the size of the uh, uh, of the filter. But with nanotechnology, with nanofibers, you don't increase the technology. The uh, you don't increase the 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 thickness of the filter, so your breathability is still uh, at large but you are able to capture more nanometric uh, uh, particles, including viruses. So that's one thing. Uh, we also have other projects uh, that are related to, um, that are related to disinfectant, uh, disinfecting surfaces, combination of uh, a few nanomaterials. Uh, we're testing on uh, the, the virus, uh, currently we're testing on the virus, to see if we can use these uh, this technology to disinfect surfaces instead of um, uh, using other conventional uh, uh, techniques. Um, another question that was asked uh, was um, to Mr. Tabatabai, I, I possess a question to you about the translation process uh, to phase one, two, or more specifically in medical nanotechnology. So basically, I think people were trying to understand how we can translate what we developed in the university to the medical field. Luckily, Tehran University of Medical Sciences consists, uh, consists of uh, nine major hospitals. There are about 8,000 hospital beds that are directly related to the, uh, to the university. So L so. It is true that in most places, what we scientists develop do not get across to the patient's bed bedside. Um, but here in in um, in our university, what we've trying we're, we're, what we're trying to do at the School of Advanced Technologies in Medicine, what we're trying to do is to come up with with ways to um, to get to the bedside. And this is facilitated because the university is affiliated with hospitals, and we have uh, easy access with the with the doctors. And also, we have uh, um, the medical doctors as our uh, as our uh, 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 faculty members that can help us uh, with the insights about patients. So the, the, yes, it is true that this translation is very difficult to achieve. And 
Um, it's true in Iran. It's true everywhere in the world, I believe. But um, uh, only a collaborative spirit between the department and the, the med medical doctors and the hospital can help us uh, um, uh, shorten this gap. So uh, these are my comments. I believe these two comments were directly uh, pointed to me, and that's uh, so I took this time to answer. Um, if, if there's any other questions, I'll be happy to answer. Next. Uh, I can, sorry, uh, moderator, can I answer the question to me? You mute, mute, mute. Yes, please, doctor. Uh, there are two. There is question for yes, you. There are two question from uh, Siti Fatima. Uh, talk, uh, ask about the startup program for from government. Uh, there are a startup program from government. There was uh, from 2015 until last year. Uh, there are some startup program. But not only for nanotechnology field, but also generally. So um, uh, we can apply uh, a proposal to get some uh, earn some money uh, to transfer technology from lab to the industry. Um, even though this is very difficult, not easy. The program is only one year. Or maybe we can we can uh, continue to after second or third year. I, I think until th uh, th second year, but I think this is still uh, difficult because uh, connecting connecting with the uh, second question about the transition from basic research, especially nanotechnology, to commercialization. Uh, is, uh, uh, yes, uh, still uh, far, uh, I think, uh, from the, there is still not, no uh, government program from, from, from uh, uh, relatively still f very few, very few, sorry, I, I cannot say no uh, government program, but very few, <clears throat> one or two or three maybe, uh, from the program of uh, making transition uh, from basic research to a commercial system to industry. Uh, still, this is the challenge for, for us, uh, especially uh, developing nanotechnology. So for me, uh, my group, I, we try to find our way. Uh, 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 maybe there are some steps. So no, we maybe do not make, you know, cl clinic trial. Now we are may, uh, now on progress. Our one of our product, uh, uh, Propolis Nano. Uh, now we are going to use this uh, for a clinic trial uh, for COVID-19. Uh, uh, hope that after this two or three months, uh, the result uh, will uh, we, we will earn the result and can be used for uh, treatment of COVID-19. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is still challenge, however, this challenge uh, for bringing a, a technology transfer from lab to in the industry. Uh, so we need more and more uh, collaboration with industry, as you said also. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other question? I think if we don't have any further question, uh, we'll, we are in the end of this webinar. Uh, we hope uh, each of our pre presenters can give uh, closing statement. So we'll start from Dr. Tabatabai. Uh, please give us your closing statement.
Okay, uh, so thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, nanotechnology um, is a technology that I believe in the next uh, uh, 20 and 40 years will bloom even further than what it has done so far. And uh, investing in this technology is, is, is very wise. But having said that, it is very important then that 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 we become, but that we be uh, responsible for this technology. Um, today, there are uh, surface modifications for, say, um, material that will never rust mm -hmm. or will mm -hmm. never catch on fire. But it is true it's that in, in oh hey, uh, excuse me, I I couldn't re I didn't realize that I disconnected i uh, was disconnected i don't know to, uh, which slide i uh, uh, disconnected uh, and uh, um, i think you were explaining the number of publications oh been, so we, yeah. we missed lots of uh, time yeah. uh, so what is the uh, uh, Atima, is there is there time that um, uh, dr asadifar continue his uh, his conversation uh we can give you around 10 minutes to explain your okay. remain presentation doctor okay uh, uh but so uh okay. I, I can i can Thanks. share my my um, screen again and go yes please share screen okay Uh, can you see my screen? Is it shared now? Not yet. Not yet? Uh, so uh, please you, you share, sh share it, but just uh, uh, I can say, uh, go to the next slide after I explain. Okay. Uh, I think I ex explained this slide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From this slide. You can, can you hear me? Yes, 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 okay. Yeah, please, please uh, tell me which slide I should start. I... Next, 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 yeah. next. Next. This so also, already. yes, this one, this one. This no. one, yeah, yeah. Yes, this one. Yeah, yeah. I I was explaining that one of the plans uh, in INIC we uh, I mean emphasized on it that uh, if we uh, could not uh, manufacture nanotechnology instruments, I mean research instruments or uh, I mean industry uh, ma manufacturing instruments in Iran, uh, it will. We could not develop nanotechnology because uh, we were uh, under heavy sanction in high technology in last uh, two, three decades. So we started a plan to help startups and uh, research uh, teams to develop nanotechnology instru instruments. So this, the result is uh, that there are more than 50 companies who, uh, I mean, uh, manufacturing these instruments and now not not only in domestic market but also in international market these instruments have been introduced uh, let's go next slide please go to next slide yeah next one Uh, 
if I want to give you, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a, a, a picture of uh, industry in non-energy industry in Iran, uh, we had uh, uh, our activities in three levels. The first is uh, producing nanometer. We have some company, uh, companies for manufacturing uh, I mean, nanomaterials like carbon nanotubes, the TiO2, ZNO, and other metal oxides or me nan nanometal particles. Uh, and the next uh, uh, level is using these technology uh, for existing industry to enable uh, these uh, companies to produce new products based on nanotechnology or improve their ex existing products. And the next uh, uh, upcoming uh, level is uh, uh, a smart nanotechnology uh, that is related to producing smart products like uh, smart drug delivery systems and smart textiles. Please go to the next slide. Yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, Ms. Fatima, if you go to next slide. Yeah, this is uh, the, the number of nanotechnology companies, about uh, uh, 250 companies. Uh, these are the companies who, uh, I mean, could manage the, uh, to enter at least one product to the market. Uh, in, you can see the distribution of the uh, industrial sectors that uh, these companies are active in it. And next slide, please. Uh, the next slide. Yeah, uh, these companies, uh, I mean, uh, could in, uh, commercialize more than uh, uh, 660 products. Please uh, go back to the, the last, the previous slide. Please. If I have the previous slide. Sorry. Yeah, uh, as you can see, uh, as I explained earlier, we had a, uh, I mean, good uh, bunch of companies that uh, uh, I mean, producing nanotechnology instruments and machineries, about 30%, and also uh, in uh, drug delivery, nanotechnology medicine, and health related products, uh, there are uh, Twelve percent of all the, the products. Uh, I think uh, I can claim that Iran, one of the uh, I mean pioneer countries in nanotechnology in medicine, and also we have uh, companies in other industrial sectors. You can see. Please go to the next slide. Yeah, these uh, these are the logos of some of the companies. Yeah, you can go uh, I mean faster. These are the logos of uh, nanotechnology companies. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, as I uh, explained, uh, we uh, had a concentrated program for developing industrial machinery uh, because when when we want to. Uh, I mean, uh, penetrate nanotechnology in, in the industry uh, or distribute this technology in, in industrial sectors, we need to translate our technologies to the product lines. Because uh, when we want to, when we ask them to use nanotechnology in the industry, they, uh, they, their question is, uh, what kind of machinery I can use in my uh, product line, so production line. So uh, these are some of the uh, industrial machinery, for example, for na nano hard coatings, decorative coatings, uh, nanofiber machine, pl uh, called plasma machine. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Please go to the next slide. Uh, 
excuse me, please go to the next. next. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we exported the uh, Iranian products to about 50 countries. Uh, the amount of the product they export is uh, is not too much, but the growth rate is promising, and I think uh, uh, it could, uh, uh, I mean, have a good share in the in, in the Iran's, uh, uh, I mean, economy in the future. Let's go to next slide. Yeah, these are some of the products. Uh, exported to other countries, for example, to anti-cancer, uh, I mean, drug. Uh, one is Sinadoxazone and the other is Paclina, uh, that they uh, now in, in domestic market and also in international market. Also, uh, electric spinning machine, that is the this product line is exported to uh, to South Korea, to China, to Malaysia, and uh, uh, it's a I mean well-known com uh, company in this area. Let's go next next slide, please. Yeah, these are these uh, uh, are one of uh, our uh, international joint ventures that the technology is provided. Uh, by an Iranian nanotechnology startup and investment, uh, I mean, provided by uh, by a Chinese company. Uh, this could be also a model for collaboration with Indonesia. Let's go to next slide. Yeah, these are uh, our uh, direct offices uh, in, uh, I mean, six countries that uh, we want to have, I mean, uh, collaboration with them. Hopefully, uh, we uh, we had started our, we had established our office in Indonesia since uh, uh, 2018. And my colleague, Mr. Tahari, uh, uh, is staying in this uh, office in, in Jakarta and uh, could facilitate our collaboration between Iran and Indonesia in nanotechnology. Let's go to the next slide. Please go to the next slide. Yeah. I don't have. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, these are some events uh, for technology exchange we had. We had two events uh, in Jakarta in 2019. Uh, and there are some Indonesian industries in, in for example, uh, medical uh, in, uh, for, for in medicine, in textile industry and other. This is our websites, nano.ir, and also the next one, nanoproduct.ir, that you can uh, get more information about uh, Iranian products uh, in nanotechnology. I think my slides uh, finished. Thank you for the time given to me, and ho I hope this uh, presentation has been useful for our audience. Thank you. And uh, excuse me for, uh, sorry for, uh, I mean, missing the uh, slides. Thank you. That's really nice presentation, doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, for Dr. Tabatabai, we have one left question for you. It's about uh, health risks uh, that can government or What is that? Can institute or government can manage the risk? How to handle and prevent this? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand the question. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, it's about handling the risk uh, of nanotechnology products. For example, uh, if we are using silver nanoparticle and it has possibility of toxicity. And how can government or institute like university or 
research center can manage this? Okay, well, well first of all, when we uh, start to synthesize uh, a nanoparticle or a nanomaterial that uh, we know eventually it will be used uh, in the uh, medical field, um, uh, there are uh, protocols as far as cytotoxicity and the, uh, the effect of the particle on biological matter and biological entity, uh, uh, whether it's cell lines and um, animal studies. And then after that, after we're done with that, there are governmental uh, sectors, uh, both in the health, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, and uh, also there is a facilitator in the INIC that Dr. Asadi Farikin maybe um, address better, uh, that can help with the uh, with the per with the acquisition of the permissions required uh, uh, to to enter the market, uh, so so there are committees that will examine the the uh, the protocols and the results of your research, and then and they they have to be examined independently once again. And once this is completed, the committee will. Uh, uh, will decide whether this particle or this technology is suitable for the market and the uh, real world. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that answers the question, but this is what I think. Thank you so much, Doctor. It's a good answer. And now we, we are in the end of webinar. Thank you for all your participation. Uh, now we ask for you to give us closing statement. Uh, Dr. Tabatabe, you can continue your closing stage statement. Thank you. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I was, uh, I was saying that. Okay, so nanotechnology is uh, is uh, uh, has a lot of potential uh, in the next uh, a few decades, but uh, we need to be responsible and we need to be. Uh, uh, taking an account of the risks associated with this technology. Uh, so, uh, uh, so there are coatings, uh, as I explained, there are coatings for material that will not burn or will not rust, but this means the composition of this material in the environment is also very difficult to achieve. Um, um, so uh, it is important for us to always uh, examine the risks associated with the with the technology and make sure that the benefits are outweighing the risks. Um, and uh, we'll hope for the best and best of collaborations with Indonesian people. Thank you very much for your closing statement. We hope uh, the same that we can collaborate. And we want to hear from the uh, Professor Nurul Taufik Rahman uh, of his closing statement. Time is yours, Doctor. You are muted, I Professor. Me. I think your mic is mute. Uh, thank you so much for everyone, and I think all of us believe that nanotechnology will be the next uh, industrial revolution. So, uh, especially for uh, students, uh, Indonesian students all over the world, and also for nanotechnologies expert, uh, I uh, ask you, and it is our challenge. So, the we need uh, the requirement is uh, we are to be a knowledge worker for nanotechnology, of course. And also because we are a researcher, we, we have to find, I think, do our uh, research best. Uh, so to become the great research result. And of course, we have to try to uh, know the entrepreneurship attitude. Uh, and also the last part of this, we have to collaborate uh, of course, R and D uh, with industry also in uh, in with, with Iran, of course, for increasing our uh, 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 this. Uh, so uh, I think this our uh, closing remark. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nurul Taufikur Rahman. Uh, we would like to hear the same. Uh, we want to hear from Dr. Reza Asadifard, his closing statement. Hmm. Thank you uh, for this opportunity given to me. Uh, as a, I mean, uh, concluding remark, I can say that uh, we welcome any kind of collaboration with our brother country, Indonesia, uh, as a, I think most populated uh, Muslim country. Uh, it is very important to us to share what uh, to share. Uh, what uh, we have in nanotechnology with our brothers. And uh, one opportunity I can mention that uh, uh, Indonesia have a national plan for its industry uh, named Making Indone Indonesia 4. I think it's a good ground for, I mean, uh, putting a part uh, for nanotechnology, uh, for the capable industries that we can introduce nan nanotechnology to them, that we have many technologies in Iran and uh, also Indo Indonesia had good, uh, I mean, industrial grounds in, in them. So uh, the industries like, uh, uh, automotive industry, uh, textile industry, chemicals, the, I mean, medicine, these are the industries that, that we can enable them in nanotechnology with your collaboration. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Fatima, moderator. It seems like this yeah, time our maybe, moderator has, uh, maybe, has maybe, maybe she's having, having uh, internet problem. So uh, thank you so much, uh, all the speakers, Dr. Tabata Tabai, uh, Prof. Nurul Tafikur Rahman, and also Dr. Reza Asadifard for your uh, comprehensive and also wh what do you call it, uh, nice presentation and also insight for all of the audiences uh, watching here and we uh, are really grateful to have you in this uh, webinar so hopefully for the next time we will have further co collaboration not only for a webinar maybe some research collaborations and me uh, on behalf of uh, Indonesian Association uh, outside Indonesia uh would like to say thank you so much for your uh, time and also presentations and to close this webinar thank you all the speakers and also all audiences hopefully we can uh join and meet uh to the next webinars uh stay safe stay healthy and we'll see to the thank next you. one see you thank you thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Welcome, Salam, Ratullah Ratu. Thank you. So. Hmm.